The Tampa Bay Rays got off to one of the best starts in baseball history in 2023. After starting the year 13-0, the Rays tied the record for the longest winning streak to start a season. And despite being in the AL East, which is by far the toughest division in baseball, the Rays have had the best record in the MLB the entire season. They currently lead baseball in almost every offensive and defensive category and are on pace to win well over 100 games. However, despite how good the Rays have been so far, they might not be as good as the record shows. After recent series losses, to both the Orioles and the Mets, the Rays showed that they have some problems just like any other team. It's out of here and the Mets win it! <laughs> And for the first time all season, the future of this Rays team is pretty uncertain. But to really understand why, we first have to go back to the beginning of the season to see why this team started off so well in the first place. Despite consistently having one of the lowest payrolls in baseball, the Rays have been a really good team over the past few years, making the playoffs every year since 2019. And this season is no different, as the Rays are ranked 28th in the MLB in total payroll at $56 million. For comparison, the team with the lowest payroll in baseball is the A's at 38 $8 million dollars, and we all know how that's going. So that raises the question, how are the Rays so good every year despite their low budget? Now there's a lot of different answers to that question, but it's mainly this. The Rays actually focus on developing their own talent instead of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on free agents. And obviously it's working, as in 2023 the team ranks first in the MLB in runs, batting average, and OPS. Now there's a few key players contributing to this insane production, and first up is Wander Franco. Franco is a perfect example of why the Rays are able to be such a good team every single year. He was drafted all the way back in 2017 when he was just 16 years old, but instead of just trading him away like most teams would, they let him develop until he was ready for the big leagues. And back in 2021, the Rays locked down Franco to an 11 year contract. This signing gave the team a star shortstop and also provided a foundation for the team going forward. And unsurprisingly, Franco is a key part of the Rays lineup this year, consistently getting on base and avoiding strikeouts. He's he's currently hitting 286 with an 838 OPS. Not to mention, he also has one of the lowest strikeout percentages in the MLB, only striking out in 14% of his at-bats. Next up in the Rays lineup is left fielder Randy Arozarena. Arozarena was the Rookie of the Year in 2021, and before this year began, the Rays signed him to a one-year deal worth just over $4 million. Now what's crazy is that's actually kind of expensive for the Rays, and that makes him one of the highest paid players on the team. But so far, it's definitely been worth it. A Rosarena pretty much does it all, hitting for both average and power and walking at a pretty high rate. While I'm recording this, he ranks 7th in the MLB in batting average and OPS, and his walk rate has increased by over 3% from last year. So really, it's no surprise that a Rosarena is a fan favorite on this Rays team, and he's one of the biggest reasons for their success so far. But another player making big contributions so far is Josh Lowe. Lowe was a first round draft pick in 2016, and this is only his second year in the majors. But for someone who's based Basically still a rookie, Lowe is putting together an incredible year with 10 home runs, a 306 average, and an OPS a little over a thousand. Now keep in mind, Lowe has been hitting in the 6th spot in the lineup, so being able to get this kind of production out of the bottom half of the lineup is pretty insane. Now the last player I want to touch on is Yandy Diaz. Despite how good the entire team has been, Diaz is probably the best bat in the lineup. He's currently ranked 4th in the MLB in batting average and 2nd in OPS behind only Ronald Acuna Jr. He also ranks in the 90th percentile in almost every category on Baseball Savant, so having this guy in the leadoff spot is pretty scary for opposing pitchers. Overall, the Rays offense has been historically good to start the season, and after looking individually at their players, it makes sense why. But you might be wondering, what about the Rays pitching? Well, again, the Rays pitching staff has been really good so far. In fact, it's been so good that the Rays pitching staff is ranked second in ERA and has the lowest batting average against in all of baseball. The starting rotation is led by by 2018 first round draft pick Shane McClanahan. Last year, McClanahan was an all-star and he finished in the top 10 in Cy Young voting. And this year, he's been just as good. He currently ranks fourth in the MLB in ERA and leads all starters with seven wins. So suffice to say, McClanahan is a strong ace that has held down the Rays pitching staff to start the season. However, moving on to the rest of the pitching staff is where things are beginning to fall apart for the Rays, starting with the fact that recently two of their best pitchers have been placed on the injured list. For example, Jeffrey Springs was their number two starter behind McClanahan to start the season. However, in a start against the Red Sox, Springs had to leave the game after only three innings, and it was later revealed that he has to undergo Tommy John surgery. But from here, things only continued to get worse for the Rays, as they also lost their number three starter in the rotation, Drew Rasmussen. After making his best 
best start of the season against the Yankees, he was placed on the IL for an arm injury, so he'll be out for the next 8 weeks. And to top it all off, the Rays are still missing Tyler Glass now from an injury he suffered in spring training. So with half of the rotation out on injuries, the Rays pitching staff is already pretty handicapped. But to make things even worse, their bullpen has been a pretty big issue recently. The Rays currently have the second most blown saves in the MLB behind the Cardinals, with just 10 saves and 21 opportunities. Now if you're not aware, a save opportunity is when a team has the lead and the bullpen has a chance to hold that lead in the last few innings. And the Rays are only accomplishing this 52% of the time. However, this wasn't always an issue. At the beginning of the season, the team wasn't relying on the bullpen as much because they were scoring so many runs. However, as the offense cools off a bit, it's becoming obvious that the bullpen is the Rays' biggest obstacle heading forward. So despite having the best record in baseball a quarter way through the season, the Rays could definitely face some trouble going forward in the midst of injuries and struggles with the bullpen. Now if you like this video, make sure to check out this one where I talk about why the Texas Rangers suddenly became one of the best teams in baseball this year.